Hi, I'm Terry Verts, and I want to talk about floating in space. One of the first things that you need to realize when you get into space is that even though you feel like you're falling, you're not. You can let go and you float. It's not a problem. It's something you really have to train your brain to think about. Another thing that you need to learn when you first get into space is how little force is required to move you. And another cool thing is you could be on the ceiling. It makes it very easy when you're working. You have to get do some work done up here. You just go up on the ceiling and get your work done. Our team of scientists is busy getting their experiment ready for launch. At the same time, NASA is preparing the space scientists who will operate the experiment aboard the International Space Station. So as astronauts on board the space station, we are the hands and eyes of the researcher. They are telling us how best to do the science, but it's up to us to make sure that science runs correctly. Astronauts train all over the world, including at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Here, they learn not just how to live in space, but also how to conduct science in microgravity. So many folks ask, how much training did you do before launching to the space station? And the answer is, many years. So we train in a lot of big areas. Number one is systems on board the ISS, robotics, how to do spacewalks, and actually science itself. Now we don't learn about a lot of the science experiments we're doing until we get up there. But what they are teaching us is scientific techniques. The techniques astronauts learn range from using tools like pipettes and microscopes in microgravity to operating scientific hardware aboard the space station. For example, we study combustion aboard the station because it behaves differently in microgravity. You wouldn't want fire to get free inside your home in space, though, so we've created special facilities to contain it. If it looks complicated, it's because it is. And it's just one of the pieces of equipment astronauts must master before they go to the space station. Hi, I'm Tracy Nuff, and this is Sharon Ranke, and we're in PDL2 right now, and we're down here at JSC to do the fluids and combustion facility training for the combustion integrated rack and the fluids integrated rack. So basically, PDL2 is a mock-up of the U.S. lab. Since 2008, we've been coming down and training all the crew members who will do payloads on the space station. We've been training cosmonauts as well. How many crew do you think you've trained at this point? <laughs> probably 50. Probably over 50 crew members we've trained. Today, Tracy and Sharon are back at work with a former student, NASA astronaut Mike Fink. This isn't Mike's first rodeo with the station, or this equipment for that matter. So back in 2008 and 2009, we were aboard the International Space Station when a space shuttle, STS-126, Chris Ferguson and crew, dropped off a whole big bunch of packages. And we carefully and slowly put it all together. But when it was all done, we had a brand new, ready, fresh out of the box combustion integration rack. And since then, our friends at Glenn Research Center here at NASA, we've been able to get some fantastic science about how things burn in space. Without gravity, without convection, things burn. And by understanding that better, we were able to make more fuel efficient engines and things here on planet Earth helping save our energy. So you can see it in the video, all the hoses uh, are within the ring and uh, so they all fit in nicely so they shouldn't interfere with us. Sounds great and looks great, thank you. Well a lot had changed in 11 years since he was up there, so he did get most of the information again and it was a new experiment so he hadn't seen that either. He did great, he's a quick learner. Great to work with, very methodical, and good humor, which is always, we like to have fun when we're training. But you know, the lab camera will be yes, showing. Yes, we have and the camera. I will be like looking, and I'm gonna go slowly, and that would be your chance to say, no! Yes, Through we are watching you, paper. yes, and help you whenever we can. This isn't the last time Tracy and Sharon will work with Mike. When he launches to the station and works on combustion projects in space, They'll watch over his shoulder through a camera broadcasting to Glenn Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio. Christina, this is Sharon with an answer to your question. So they do want you to go ahead and install the cable tie. We all, thanks for having that done for me. Anytime. Being able to operate and maintain the space station while conducting crucial research could get overwhelming. 
Luckily, astronauts have strong support teams on the ground and often develop personal connections to the research. I was so impressed at the different things we'd be working on, cancer or Parkinson's or even Alzheimer's disease. So as a physician, these meant a lot to me. These personally were very important experiments that we needed to do. But in all honesty, the entire crew, not just myself as the physician, were excited about working on these experiments. You get a little nervous at first as you begin to pipette or even utilize a microscope, which I hadn't used in years. But you quickly learn because you realize how important it is to the science and the investigators and scientists running you through all these experiments were fantastic and just walked us through every step of the way. Yeah, just uh, keep us posted, but we're, Drew and I are ready to continue up. Good working with you guys today and I'll see you soon. We got here on a Thursday and it's currently Sunday. We've been in a big day yesterday filling up these wells with gel solution and getting ready for handover at 7.30 a.m. on Monday, ahead of launch on Tuesday afternoon.